Okay. Okay, this is Sarah Cripps with the Country Community Radio Show, and we have here with us today two uh, native sons and local luminaries. Well, maybe one local luminary. We've got Mike Corley, and then I don't know what you'd call Joy Reader, but he's here too. And um, so we're here today to um, discuss with Mike and Joey their um, athletic achievement at the Cab Community High School, which was the single uh, game rushing record that each of them attained. And then apparently Joey broke Mike's. But Mike has told us all that he knows more about it than anybody. That was his own statement. So we're going to let him start us off here. And taking us back to 1972, you were what year in high school? I was a senior in high school that okay. year, Sarah. And the only reason I know more about it is because I saw Joey break my record. I had to be at both games, so I was the only one that could, among this group, that could claim that. Well, the community has a quite a bit of doubt about the fact that there was ever a time that Joey Reader was able to run. Mitchko and I have discussed this matter thoroughly, and she said, Joey Reader ran? And I said, yes, apparently. So this is true, is that right? It is true, okay. but, but let me explain it. Okay. Both Joey and I benefited from the same thing, and that was a good offensive line. Okay. We, we, he was the go-to guy that night. I just happened to be the go-to guy my night in October of, of, uh, of 1972. We just happened to get the carries. The way those guys were blocking on both occasions, whoever was carrying the ball was going to get a bunch of yards. So now, Mike, you neither one of you attained this record at home. Is that true? Well, that's true. Both that's right, because I was in Gainesboro. Okay, you were running. You were a tailback. I was the tailback in a high formation. Bill Owen was okay. our quarterback that year. You know, he later had a had a son that pitched for Vanderbilt. So Bill had a great arm. His son inherited that, and he okay. took it to great heights there as a pitcher for Vanderbilt University. And so y'all are playing the Jackson County Blue Devils. That is right. It was over in October. I remember it was a cold night because the gas meters were running that night. Lord, you were focused on gas. <laughs> Even right. as a youngster, he had his mind on Middle Tennessee gas. That is right. <laughs> so you, um, you ran for how many yards? It was 190 yards. But let me tell you, I was a, the beneficiary of a, a scorer's judgment. Because the biggest play that night was about a 75-yard run that was designed as a swing pass, which you don't get credit for yards you run with the ball if it was a pass. But Walter Burton was the official scorer that night, and he said, you know, I believe that was a lateral. So if that was a lateral, then you get another 75 yards, and you're gonna be holding the record when it's over. So that is the honest truth. So it may be it may be a big ruse, the whole thing, but it stood up that way because of Walter's judgment. Okay, and so you ran for 190 yards. Now, did they stop the game or anything? <laughs> oh no, we were away. You know. The, well, I didn't think they would, but I wanted to make sure. They only stopped that game one time, and I recall it because it was late in the game. We were running over them, and Bobby Turner got in the game, oh. and Bobby was a freshman. So you can tell that, you know, getting some of the players that hadn't played a lot. Bobby mm -hmm. hadn't played any. And I remember the words of Coach Cantrell as he sent Bobby into the game, because Bobby really didn't know what he was doing, and he said, Bobby, kill the quarterback. That was the quote. Well, on the very, it just so happened, the very first play that Bobby went in, the quarterback went back to pass, he dropped back, he threw the ball, and about five or six seconds later, Bobby got through the, his blocker, and hit the quarterback across both his shoulder blades from behind, knocked him down, got him on the ground, and then started hitting him across the head, one fist after another, and the, the uh, referee stopped the game to get Bobby out of it, and he told me, because I was the team captain, he said, whoever that was, you tell him never to come back on the field. That was the only time that game was stopped. Okay. It, wasn't, it didn't have a thing to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with you. And then we moved four years later to 1976 in the fleet of foot, Joy Reader. And Joy, you were, what, what year would you have been? I was a senior. Senior in, in high school. And you were, what position? Play fullback. You were a fullback. So a little bigger, I guess. Yeah, walking the, 160. The stocky, the stocky fullback. <laughs> 
And so you all were playing against whom? Nashville Jolton. School north of Nashville. It was a school north of Nashville. It's no longer there. It no longer exists. That I think tells just you played all, in two towns, played in two years. Tells you how long this has been. <laughs> the school's not in existence, but Joy still is. So <laughs> we're grateful for that. And um, Joy, you this was an away game again, is that right? Opening game of the year. First oh, the first of the game of the season. It was. And you were under uh, Coach Canfield as well. Yep. And you rushed for, for how many yards? 210 yards. 210. 18 carries. 18? Yep. Okay. And tell me, um, who was your quarterback? Norris Calvert. Oh, Norris Calvert. Well, I know that y'all had some good times. I am, <laughs> I'm sure you did. And uh, so tell me a little about this game. Well, it's the only game, so we didn't know a whole lot about them. They had a good running back returning from, from the previous season. His name was Jerry Clack. And, he was a big kid, and I don't think many people gave us much hope. But we went down there and played well. I remember the, the first play of the game, we uh, ran it between the right guard and the center, and I broke it for about 60 yards and got caught from behind somewhere inside the 10, scored a couple of plays later, and I had I don't know, two or three long runs that night. But I had any speed, I don't know how many yards that I had. But, and so at that point, could you tell, I mean, even after the first couple of carries, that you were going to have a good night if you could if you could keep running behind your blockers and keep everything, um, keep everything well, away at the start? I would say that early, I knew how good it was going to be, but, uh, uh, you know, we had a pretty good offensive line when they were all healthy. And, you know, we had a decent team when, when everybody was healthy. We just had problems staying healthy. Who were some of the guys on your O-line? Uh, Blake. Martin, uh, Jeff James, uh, Greg Dugdale, Terry Knowles, Hugh Washer, the late Tommy Pugh. Uh, we had some, we were a senior laden team that okay. played together for a long time. So y'all had had a chance to, to mesh over the over your prior time and you kind of knew each other, which y'all were going to do. Far too well. Far too well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Mike, you were at this game. Also. Yeah, yes, I was. Because Chris, yeah, Chris Corley, right. Chris so Corley was right. on yeah. Joey's team. All right, and I was at school at Lipscomb, so <clears throat> it wasn't far up the road to Joelton, so I went up there and watched that ball game. And what position did uh, did younger brother play? I think he played left out. Okay. Oh, he played tailback. Oh, did okay. <laughs> I don't remember what. Well, I didn't Mike, think he played anything. <laughs> Mike had his mind on those gas meters, and he really wasn't sure what position his brother played. Um, all right. Well, anything else? Either either of you cares to add to this? Well, I want to mention some of the fellows that that I played. With. Okay. I got to mention yeah, some I of his teammates. I neglected to ask you that. You and know, I'm, I'm they, sorry. It was the best bunch of men I think I was ever associated yeah. with. We had some great linemen in there. You had Jay Whiteford, who's an engineer, went off in a uh, highly technical skilled area. Jackie Gaither, you know, the realtor down in Lebanon now, probably owns half the county. I mentioned Bill Owen, one of the linemen, he's a quarterback, but he had he has a great distinction. He's a Baptist minister and been preaching at the same place for thirty years. I don't think that I didn't even think that was possible. But I asked well, him how I didn't that, either. Well, I asked him how it happened, and he said, well, I had three sons, and they all scored a 1,000 points in high school, so nobody wanted to fire him because they knew these kids were coming, <laughs> and he was able to maintain his position there. Randy Pritchard, Randy was uh, really a team leader. He was always our, our spirit stick. He could, you could always count on him. And Robert Rowe, Robert wasn't a big guy. Matter of fact, he was the smallest guy that we had on the team, but he... He knew there was no disability in life that couldn't be overcome with ter determination, and Robert was the most determined fellow there ever was. Uh, David Colwell was was our uh, tight end, and David was you know, 6'3", he could catch a ball anywhere. Um, Bear Knowles was our center. Bear would hunt down somebody to block if there wasn't anybody in front of him. So he <laughs> he did have a, rough, a tough grade, didn't he? Yeah, it, it was a good one. Fred Dow, Fred, he was yeah. always looking for somebody to hit. It didn't matter if it was on our team or another, but he was going to look for somebody. And uh, Robert Donaldson, you know, Robert went on to TSU, and he is an IRS agent. Last time I saw him, he was in Nashville uh, at a meeting I happened to be. And our punter, we had a great punter. And that was uh, Joey Goodman. Joey, okay. Joey 
he kicked us out of several problems during that year. And this game that we had at Gainesboro, the best thing about it was it was really the culmination of our season. It wasn't the last game, but it was a real celebration of the season because we had played those guys in a scrimmage game before the season ever started. And it was just a, a struggle. It was a nip and tuck a game. Did you I mean, win or lose? I'm in not the even sure. We, well, I think we scored maybe one more time than they did in that, but it wasn't a one-sided game. Well, okay. By the time the end of the season rolled around, we had decided we were a lot better than we thought we were in the beginning, and we came in there. We beat those guys 44 to nothing, I think, 42 to nothing, something like that. It wasn't even a contest. So, it kind of shows that if you believe you can do something. Uh, it, it can happen. The little tell back that could. I think <laughs> yeah, there's a yeah. book somewhere. Enjoy it. Sarah, <laughs> yes, sir. I've got to interrupt here a minute and uh, saying I appreciate you putting this group 